So let's just repeat it a little bit uh, to make sure we understood. So we are looking for the uh, amount of heating that is required when the heating is off the equator to drive thermally direct uh, meridional circulation. So we are looking basically at uh, what level of heating is required to drive vertical motion over the heating and uh, this meridional circulation uh, that goes with it. We made uh, simple arguments based on these equations of uh, uh, momentum and derived uh, a thermal wind relation and then looked for angular momentum arguments to say uh, what uh, uh, needs to happen in terms of uh, the angular momentum gradient uh, in the meridional direction uh, to be able to drive the uh, uh, direct thermal circulation. Okay, There are many such uh, arguments made and we'll see later on that uh, there is some argument saying that the Tibetan plateau heating is not even necessary for driving monsoonal circulation but we will stick with this uh, for consistency with the book and not get into the other details uh, that you will have to look up. Sorry I didn't go into the uh, display mode. So this is the key figure again. Let me go through. Uh, this is the diagram illustrating the latitudinal distribution of the uh, surfaces of constant angular momentum for different heat sources. This is no heat source, weak axisymmetric heat source and strong axisymmetric heat source. So basically we are looking at the zonal mean meridional uh, plane and looking at how the distortion of the angular momentum, uh, constant angular momentum lines uh, is going to be affected. So moderate heat source located in the subtropics adjacent uh, to a, a heat source with winds blowing from east to west, uh, so u bar is less than zero. Uh, MA decreases with altitude uh, and surfaces of constant MA bend downwards towards the equator. Uh, we can see that here. Um, consistent with the generation of negative vertical shear. So we are going to reverse the temperature gradient because the heating maximum is here. So as we just saw with the uh, profiles over the Gangetic Plain and Tibetan Plateau. We have dt uh, dy uh, increasing with latitude towards the Himalayan uh, Tibetan Plateau instead of decreasing. T it, when it decreases we know that vertical shear gives us uh, westerlies. Uh, in this case we are getting an easterly which is consistent. Um, okay. Uh, where uh, UA is greater than zero, so this is uh, in the case of uh, strong uh, heat source. So MA bend towards the pole on the uh, northern uh, side, so this is bending this way towards the equator. It will bend towards the uh, pole on the northern side where you have uh, uh, U bar, so you have westerlies, uh, you have easterlies ahead of it, westerlies behind it, uh, and the gradient of MA points upward, uh, tick, 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 I'm uh, losing track here, very long. Uh, north of the heat source, sources of MA bend toward the pole and the gradient of MA points upward toward the equator, consistent with the development of negative vertical shear. Um, in C, strong heat source in the subtropics associated with the elevated Himalayan Tibetan Plateau. This is the most realistic situation we are looking for in this simple explanation. South of a strong axisymmetric heat source towards the equator, wind speeds increase rapidly with height causing MA to decrease rapidly with height. Surfaces of constant MA are bent sufficiently that the gradient uh, of M points completely downward now, so towards the surface. Closed surfaces of angular momentum form annuli around uh, surrounding the earth uh, because the wind velocity vectors lie within the surfaces of constant MA. A closed meridional circulation is possible. So you can go and look up these papers if it is not totally clear, but I hope it's clear in terms of the simple arguments. So look for the threshold criterion for the onset of this meridional circulation. Uh, we look for the, the vanishing of the latitudinal gradient of MA. So dMA dφ 
is written now as 2 omega a squared cosine phi sine phi plus u a cosine phi minus, so this is in spherical coordinates, so you get the so-called geometric terms, which we will promptly ignore because sine phi gets smaller as phi increases, minus a cosine phi du bar uh, d phi, so we have the uh, latitudinal shear, horizontal shear here, and the uh, gradient to vanish, this has to go to zero. If you ignore this term, then we end up with uh, 1 over a du bar d phi, because a squared is over here, you define, divide by a squared cosine phi. Uh, oops, that becomes uh, equal to 2 omega sine phi, or zeta, the relative vorticity, has to equal the planetary vorticity. This is the key instability condition that will kick in the meridional uh, direct thermal cell. So as soon as the heating uh, that is creating uh, vorticity, as you remember before, is so strong that it creates relative vorticity that is uh, greater than um, the uh, planetary vorticity. Remember we always said typically for most flows planetary vorticity tends to be greater than relative vorticity. But if the heating is so strong off the equator that it creates relative vorticity, the cyclonic flow that is so great that it is greater than um, the planetary vorticity, then to, to drive the uh, uh, vorticity balance, you will need to advect in vorticity and this direct thermal cell gets set up. So this is somewhat similar to the arguments we made in terms of the absolute vorticity line being uh, north of the equator in the ITCZ near equatorial precipitation distribution that we were discussing before. Uh, and we talked about uh, various terms needed to balance vorticity to drive inertial instability and precipitation north of the equator. Now we are going w way north and we're taking the heat source way north and finding a threshold. So basically using those equations we can produce an expression for the required temperature gradient induced by a heat source for the existence of a meridional circulation which looks like this d d phi of 1 over sine phi d t bar d phi which is uh, set up by the, the heat source so which is minus 4 t bar omega squared a squared sine phi or g z uh, for meridional velocity not being a zero. So it's kind of uh, a nice argument the, with simple models uh, to show that uh, the heating uh, of the equator can drive uh, direct thermal meridional circulation when it is strong enough to create relative vorticity that is greater than the local uh, planetary vorticity. So we have done many assumptions to solve this equation and to derive this condition. What you do is then look for all the consistencies in terms of the vertical shear ahead of the heating of the uh, Tibetan plateau, behind the heating and the meridional circulation, and realize or argue that, uh, hypothesize that this is what happens. What else you can do is to compare the heating associated with the Himalayan uh, Tibetan plateau to the heating of the desert over West Africa and over Australia to understand why that those monsoons are not strong enough to extend precipitation so far off the equator compared to the uh, monsoonal circulation. Okay, so just get a hang of the physics of how of equatorial heating can drive direct meridional circulation under certain um, conditions.